Welcome to Survivor Scale. I'm H2 Mass, and today I'm ranking every main character in John Lafia's 1990 childhood trauma, Child's Play 2, where Chucky comes back to life and looks to succeed where he failed in the first film by taking over Andy's body before he becomes trapped inside a doll forever. We start the film at the Playhouse Corporation, home of the Good Guy Dolls. There, Executive Sullivan listens to his assistant Matson describe his plan to absolve the company of the negative publicity it's gotten in the two years since the crazy events of the first film. Trying to put his boss's mind at ease, Matson tells Mr. Sullivan that he has good news, but Mr. Sullivan interrupts him like a student trying to get out of school early. My stomach hurts, Matson. Very informative. Matson then tells Mr. Sullivan that they have found the doll that supposedly committed the murders and have almost finished rebuilding him to prove that it couldn't have done what Andy and his mother says it did. Unfortunately though, as one of the workers touches the machine reconstructing Chucky, he receives a massive shock of electricity and goes flying through the window. With yet another catastrophe threatening the company, Matson shows an even stronger desire to appease his boss and ask him what to do with the doll. But Mr. Sullivan just gives him instructions on how to use a suppository. Stick it up your ass. Meanwhile, two foster parents named Phil and Joanne Simpson observe Andy Barkley, who's been separated from his mother after she got sent to an institution when she supported Andy's story about a possessed doll that kills people. Very supportive parent. As Joanne speaks to the manager of the foster center, Phil seems quite hesitant to adopt a kid with so much emotional baggage, but he shows a lack of conviction when he disregards his concerns and goes along with taking Andy into his family. On the way to Andy's new home, Joanne asks Andy his favorite food, and he shows that despite being two years older, he still has a putrid level of healthiness when he says, Chocolate. Then, in a poor display of focus, Phil gets distracted while driving, but Joanne shows some urgency when she stops Phil from crashing into an oncoming truck. Never trust anyone driving in movies. Meanwhile, Matson takes the doll to his car after work, but reveals the effects of his untidiness when he can't fit it inside with so much junk in his trunk. So he throws him in the back seat and starts driving to his girlfriend's house. When he calls her, she asks him if he remembered to bring vodka for their two week anniversary, but he shows his poor memory and horniness when he lies and says yes, even though he actually forgot it. <laughs> Knowing that vodka raises her freakiness levels, Matson goes into a nearby liquor store, allowing Chucky to use Matson's phone to call the foster agency, acting as Andy's imaginary uncle Uncle Charles to find out where he lives now. When Matson gets back in the car, Chucky jumps up and presses a gun against his face, telling him to drive near Andy's new home. After Matson parks the car, Chucky ties his hands behind the seat and Matson begs for his life, but Chucky doesn't care and pulls the trigger anyway, which just releases a splash of water. Chucky and Matson then laugh for a moment before Chucky places a bag over Matson's head and chokes him to death, leaving the asphyxiating assistant in D tier. As Joanne reads a story to Andy, Chucky runs into the house but stops when he realizes that Andy isn't alone. Fortunately for Chucky though, he discovers that the family has a good guy doll of their own, so Chucky buries it in the backyard and takes its place, waiting for an opportunity to steal Andy's body without someone stopping him. The next day, Phil and Joanne have a conversation in the kitchen, where Phil doubles down on his disdain for Andy, now wanting to get rid of him. Andy though demonstrates his nosiness and stealth while also exposing Phil and Joanne's poor awareness when he listens to their conversation in clear view without being noticed. You telling me you can't see him? As Andy takes a walk through the living room, he comes across the doll, who tries to pull off one of their usual introductions, but makes a small pause before saying its name. Realizing something may be off, Andy shows some ingenuity and checks the doll's back for batteries to make sure that it didn't somehow speak without a power source. Since it has batteries though, he falsely assumes that it can't be Chucky and displays poor caution when he takes the doll with him instead of destroying it. He's gonna regret that. And he already does! At night, Andy wakes up with all four of his limbs tied down to his bed and Chucky sitting on top of him. As Chucky begins chanting the spells to take over his body though, Andy's foster sister Kyle climbs into his room through the window. So Chucky goes back to doll mode and Kyle starts untying Andy, not questioning how he could have tied his own arms and legs by himself. Phil and Joanne then walk in and think Kyle tied Andy down, but when Andy tells them it was Chucky, Phil blows a gasket and throws Chucky into the basement. See, he's gone, he can't bother you anymore. The next day, Andy goes to school, but Chucky follows him and hides in the classroom. 
After Andy turns in an assignment, Chucky waits for everyone to leave the room and then writes some obscenities on his paper. When Andy's teacher discovers his work, she gets angry and makes him stay in detention after school, locking Chucky in the closet when Andy tries to blame him for the writing on his paper. His teacher then leaves and locks Andy inside the classroom like a fucking maniac, so Andy shows some grit when he opens the window and climbs out before Chucky can break out of the closet. When Andy gets home, he tells Phil and Joanne what happened at school, but they do pretty much the same thing everyone else does and don't believe him, with Phil showing a lot of confidence in his debating ability when he shows Andy that Chucky is still in the basement and therefore couldn't have been in his classroom. Or he could have left and came back, which is what he did. At night, Andy decides to take on Chucky alone, but prepares himself by grabbing an electronic knife before venturing into the basement. As he walks around, he reveals his skittishness when he hears a noise and then overreacts by bumping into some junk behind him. When he opens the dryer, he shows some solid caution and stabs the clothes in case Chucky is hiding underneath them, but he stops when he hears a noise behind him and goes to inspect the area. Unfortunately, Chucky jumps on top of Andy, which causes him to drop the knife. As Chucky continues attacking him, Andy shows some resolve and reclaims his weapon before once again attacking Chucky and making him run under the stairs. Much like a killer who's trapped kids in his basement, all the noise from the scuffle draws Phil to the top of the staircase. However, he only sees Andy holding a knife, with no killer doll in sight, so he calmly tells Andy to put the weapon down and starts walking towards him, allowing Chucky to knock him off the stairs with so much bad luck that he hits the floor and breaks his neck. Sending the skeptic without sympathy for survivors of slashers to DT. Heartbroken and blaming Andy for Phil's death, Joanne makes the already traumatized child go back to the foster center. A bit later, Kyle finds Chucky sitting behind the staircase and throws him into the trash. As she sits on the swing outside the house, she knocks off some dirt and uncovers the original good guy doll that Chucky buried. Realizing that there may be something deeper about the Chucky she just threw away, she opens the trash can but finds that Chucky has gone, so she immediately displays her deduction when she recognizes the danger and tries to warn Joanne. When Joanne doesn't answer, Kyle prepares herself by finding a knife before she walks into her room. There, she finds Joanne dead, but before she can mourn, Chucky attacks her from behind. Showing some resilience, she knocks him away and he hides under her bed, only to trip her and press a knife to her face. He then forces her to drive to Andy's foster center, but on the way there, she shows some resolve by putting on her seatbelt and slamming the brakes to throw Chucky through the windshield. Sadly though, he survives and jumps on her back, placing the knife to the back of her head. When they get to the foster center, Chucky kills the manager and then separates Andy from Kyle before climbing into the back of a truck. When Chucky tries to perform the ritual, he stops when he sees Kyle driving behind them. Kyle then honks at the truck driver, but his dumbass won't listen, so she drives in front of him to stop him from moving. When she goes to help Andy, she sees him running away with Chucky on his back, and as she chases after them, the driver gives us his opinion on the Queen of England. Crazy bitch! Poetically, Chucky then runs into the good guy doll's factory, but just before the gate closes, Kyle shows off some athleticism and rolls inside. Finally alone, Chucky begins chanting the spells to take over Andy's body, but when he finishes, Chucky is still in his own ugly ass body, having taken too long to perform the ritual and now trapped inside the doll. <laughs> Sucks for him. Kyle then buries Chucky under some dolls and Andy runs away. After Andy meets with Kyle, the two of them try to escape the facility, but as they climb a conveyor belt, Chucky follows after them, so Kyle closes the gate on Chucky's hand, trapping him in place. Unfortunately, her lack of conviction to kill Chucky allows him to rip off his own hand, repurpose the knife, and then continue chasing after them. Ripping off your own hand? He'd do pretty well in Saw. Andy though shows quick reflexes when Kyle sees Chucky and yells for Andy to duck. Kyle then smacks Chucky and he gets stuck on a conveyor belt that leads to the destruction of dolls. Thinking they've won, Andy and Kyle start walking away, but Kyle gets knocked unconscious and Chucky's ugly ass goes after Andy, but he dodges Chucky's attack and shows off his machinery skills when he sprays Chucky with hot plaster. After Andy saves Kyle from one of the machines, the two of them check on Chucky, who comes back once again, but Kyle reacts quickly and injects him with a tube that inflates his head until it explodes. With nothing left of Chucky but the stereotype of a middle school science project, Andy and Kyle walk out of the factory. Finally, victorious. At least until the next film. Time to rank. Starting off with a child who doesn't want to play anymore, Andy has another solid performance, displaying enough intuition and ingenuity to place the troubled child trapped by trauma in a tier. 
finally, we have the newest addition to the scale with Kyle, who has a strong debut performance, successfully defending Andy while keeping herself alive as well, placing the orphan that sees killer dolls without the need for opiates in A tier. But that's it. The average rank for this cast was C2. A uh, very average collection of characters. While it didn't match the quality of the original, Child's Play 2 still had some great practical effects and Chucky still at the top of his game, even if he couldn't make it a great movie. Thanks for watching.